This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, strengths and vulnerabilities of teen skateboarders have been revealed in a University of Otago study. An historic waka at Otako Marae has been moved to its final resting place where other taonga are set to join it. And cattle have returned to the Tokomariro Agricultural Show after a two year absence due to Microplasma bovis. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Strengths and vulnerabilities of teen skateboarders have been revealed in a University of Otago study. And it seems many of those who can drive cars to get about are choosing a more carbon neutral mode of transport. University of Otago researchers have discovered the humble and in vogue again skateboard is the preferred mode of transport for some. Um, it's super easy to get around and it's fun and it's exercise. And it's like when you're going from class to class, like you can just skate between it. You can't drive from class to class. I think it's just a lot easier in such a small city to skate. The university's figures show of the 775 Southern young adults surveyed, 7% chose skating as their main mode of transport. 20 year old university arts student Joel Fields is typical of the people studied and represents the demographic well. I know like a bunch of like people at university like who start skating when they come to Dunedin just because it's easy to get to and from class and like you know they're just doing it as a mode of transport and you can learn that you can pick it up in about like four months I'd say you can get A to B pretty good. The university says this 7% reported higher levels of well-being community connectedness and physical activity than those using any other mode of transportation. Joel Fields says many of his peers are environmentally minded and riding skateboards as a mode of transport is more carbon friendly than using a motor vehicle. Like a lot of young people are also like environmentally conscious and skating is a super good alternative for that. Like if you're health conscious and environmentally conscious like Skating is an awesome option for you. His anecdotal evidence correlates with the researcher's findings. As the study, done for Otago's Department of Preventive and Social Medicine, shows more people are choosing to ride skateboards than sit their driver's licence. And as well as the other reasons, it looks like getting air like this could be a bunch of fun. In Dunedin, the South Today. The University of Otago has postponed this week's graduation ceremonies and parades following a security threat last week. The Otago Polytechnic and University postponed the graduation ceremonies last week following advice from police. Neither the university nor police confirmed the nature of the threat, but it had been widely reported to involve a shooting. No arrests had been made. While parades and ceremonies have been cancelled, all other associated graduation events will still take place on campus. Details on where graduates can pick up their certificates will be sent directly to them. A replacement graduation event is being considered for next year. In the latest leg of a 500 year journey, an historic waka has been raised during an hour of carefully choreographed movements at Otako. The 6.3 metre long waka is the second oldest found in New Zealand and was unearthed in 2014 from Papanui Inlet. Ten strong men, with more guiding the way, took great care moving an ancient hull a few metres to its new home, a custom designed laboratory in a converted 40 foot shipping container. Te Runanga o Otako chairwoman Rachel Wesley says the remains of the ancient canoe date back to before Pākehā arrived. The waka comes from Papanui Inlet. Um, it was dated to around 450 BP, uh, so roughly mid 15th century. Uh, so we dated it using fibres that were found both inside the hull and underneath the waka. So one came back 440, one came back 460, in the middle 450. The hull is expected to dry out, sitting on a cradle shaped from the 3D modelling of its totara hull. 
in a temperature and humidity controlled environment for about a year. Wesley says the marae plans to feature the artefact with others collected throughout the years. The next phase in our um, aspirations is to build a purpose-built um, whareitauka or museum that will be able to display the waka and along with the other artefacts that we've excavated from Papanui over the years uh, and the other tauka that have been on the marae for the last 60 odd years. Wesley says the move is another step in the biggest piece of archaeology undertaken on the marae. After the waka was removed from Papanui Inlet, it spent three years soaking in a water tank at the marae to remove its salt content, then spent the past three years submerged in a polyether compound. Wesley is pleased the recent move went well. Massive relief, so relieved it didn't split down the middle, it was so fragile. Runanga o Otako manager Michelle Tairoa hopes the marae can open its whareitoka to coincide with the introduction of New Zealand history in the National School Curriculum in 2022. In Dunedin, the South Today. Central City Bypass in Dunedin with electronic signboards that point to available parking may be part of a multi-million dollar transport package to ease congestion troubles when the city's new hospital is built. $53 million package is to be included in the draft of the Dunedin City Council's 10-year plan. If approved, it will include an arterial route via the harbour to bypass the city along with a boost for public transport plus walking and cycling networks. Whether all of the proposals make it into the final version of the 10-year plan remains to be seen, but councillors have decided not to leave any out. The City Council's proposed spending is part of an interconnected package costing over $100 million to be shared with the Otago Regional Council and New Zealand Transport Agency. Construction of the new hospital is expected to start in 2022. After an absence of two years, cattle were back on show at the Tokomariro A&P show this year. Despite the day starting off with showers, numbers were only slightly down from other years. A few early showers didn't dampen the spirits of those attending the 155th Tokomariro A&P show in Milton. This year's event featured the usual displays and judging of livestock including the return of cattle after the beasts had to stay away for the last two years. Uh, the cattle are back since we've had bovis. Um, that's the first time we've had cattle back again. Horses featured in the show ranged from the big muscular draft horses to the more sophisticated and genteel equestrian steeds. Yeah, there's a lot of different classes that they're all competing, right from kids right through to older yeah, much more mature people. The Tokomariro A&P is one of the oldest A&P shows in the country. In Milton, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, a shortage of wood from Canterbury and Nelson is likely to have an effect on the price and availability of timber, and the New Zealand Sports Hall of Fame is under threat of closure. Here I am in the middle of George Street, corner of Hanover and George. Come and see what I get in here. This is where I go shopping. So look what I can choose from in here. It's fantastic. Knitwear, flash shirts. Look at those flash shirts. Trousers, jeans, pullovers. Oh, look, they've got some hoodies. I love hoodies. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell, menswear, it fits. But my friend Lindsay, he says, this store's only here till January the 10th, so I better dash. See you later. Episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30.
over 100 years, Presbyterian support has been helping people in your region through all conditions, ages and stages of life. Our Enliven and Family Work services are always there when you need them. People in your community are facing unprecedented challenges and they need your help. By making a donation to your local Presbyterian support in South Canterbury, Otago or Southland, you'll be helping us to help people where you live. Together we can make a difference. We are people helping people. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. shortage of wood from Canterbury and Nelson is likely to have an effect on prices and availability of timber from the west coast. Kiwi Rail say they are running 14 log wagons a day from the west coast to Littleton with all the logs destined for export. It says the rail service is running at near full capacity. With Nelson's forests overcut, industry insiders are predicting the strong demand for west coast logs will last 10 to 15 years forcing the price of wood up. While price rises will provide a boost for exporters, the high prices paid by China for New Zealand wood may squeeze some local sawmills and manufacturers out of the market. The New Zealand Sports Hall of Fame is under threat of closure with CEO Ron Polinski having worked several months without pay. The Dunedin City Council has stepped in to allow the hall to stay open for another six months to try and find long-term options for its survival. A cash injection of $50,000 from the Dunedin City Council will allow the New Zealand Sports Hall of Fame to stay open until mid next year. The sports museum was set to shut at the end of this year due to a lack of funding. The only reason the Sports Hall of Fame is housed in Dunedin's railway station is because when the organising body was looking for a place to open a museum to the public, the DCC was the only one that showed interest. For the first seven years it existed just in an office in, in Wellington. People were inducted but the, rest, the public of New Zealand, um, if they knew it existed, had nothing to look at and so the whole board decided that it needed a, a museum and it wrote to local authorities in Auckland, Rotorua, Wanganui, Wellington, Christchurch and Dunedin asking for suggestions and of support and the only one that responded positively was um, Dunedin which offered this uh, first floor of the, of the railway station. The hall boasts a remarkable collection of all sorts of unique memorabilia such as the motorbike on which 40 year old speedway rider Ivan Major won his sixth world title in Poland and much of the collection was gathered through word of mouth. I was asked to, um, to set it up and so I walked in one day and there's this vast empty expanse and the only thing here was a bust of Richard Hadley um, which I'd brought from Wellington with me and so for the next 18 months I made a couple of trips around New Zealand visiting people asking um, asking people for a loan or a donation of materials and as the, the word got around and people would ring me and offer me stuff like Bob Charles for example rang me one day when I was walking down George Street and said oh, I hear you're setting up the Hall of Fame can you can you come up to the farm and I'll give you some stuff so I went up to his place in Oxford and he had a triple garage and he opened the doors of the triple garage and it was just the, the floor was just covered with golfing memorabilia of his you know, clubs and bags and clothes. 
And there's a fascinating story behind the curation of many of the items, such as this original of the statue of All Black Captain Dave Gallagher standing at Eden Park. It was sculpted by uh, an Auckland artist, Malcolm Evans, who rang me and uh, said, said that he had done this thing and, and did, I want, uh, did I want this? And I said, well, yes, I'd love it, but how do I get it to, to Dunedin? And Malcolm said, oh, don't worry, I'll get it. So he, two days later, he showed up in a van with Dave Gallagher in bits and pieces, and he sat down in the foyer in, uh, in the railway station putting Dave Gallagher back together again. And then we um, enlisted the help of some visitors to the station and carried, carried Dave up the stairs and plonked him here, and he's been here ever since. But the museum is under threat of closure. While Sport NZ contributes $100,000 and the City Council offers a rates rebate of about $47,000 a year, the income is well short of what is needed to run it. Polensky says he's running it with the assistance of his family and he went without pay for several months this year. It's hoped the extra $50,000 from the DCC to keep the hall open until June will allow time for longer-term options to be explored. In Dunedin, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we hear about the month that was May and we check out tomorrow's weather. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. Your PVC windows and doors. PVC is 9% more efficient than standard aluminium and 60% more efficient than thermally broken aluminium. It's multi-chambered, you don't get any condensation through the frame. If you put decent glass in, you get a big, big difference to aluminium. Step into Shop on Carroll and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Welcome to Alex Campbell Menswear. Our three stores have no shortage of stock. Check these out. We've got the Dunedin print t-shirts. Check out our zillions of short sleeve shirts. These are, these are crackers. They iron themselves in the wash. Iron cheetah they're called. And there's some really cool polo shirts. Look at all the bright colours. And of course there's no shortage of shorts. This is always one of our brightest colours. Our long sleeve fashion shirts. Jeans, casual trousers, dress trousers, you name it, we have you covered. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So if you're shopping for your family or yourself, come and see Alex Campbell Menswear stores. We're full of stock. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Middle of George Street, corner of Hanover and George. Come and see what I get in here. This is where I go shopping. So look what I can choose from in here. It's fantastic. Knitwear, flash shirts. Look at those flash shirts. Trousers, jeans, pullovers. Oh, look, they've got some hoodies. I love hoodies. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell, menswear, it fits. But my friend Lindsay, he says, this store's only here till January the 10th, so a bit of dash. See you later. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh. Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz
Welcome back. May was a month that saw shops and tourist ventures start up again, although some businesses were having to operate on a slimmer model due to the absence of overseas tourists. As the country moved to level two, people got a chance to go out shopping again, or even just get a haircut, with long queues outside barber shops. Well, I've been here since 10 to 9, yeah, just waiting. I'm a haircut. I'm a barber as well, but even barbers need haircuts, eh? <laughs> the shops and malls were bustling after having been closed for several weeks, although Dunedin's Kmart and H&J Smith remained closed due to earthquake concerns. The first flight from Auckland to Queenstown in about seven weeks was greeted by media and dignitaries, with the hopes of the tourist capital of New Zealand being able to bounce back. Here we are, after two months, uh, first flight in from Auckland, uh, delighted to see them here, bunch of happy campers coming into town. Um, very small start, but a very important start, just a fabulous day. Jetboat operator KJet welcomed its first passengers in nearly two months, but the absence of overseas visitors was taking its toll. We've reduced the hours, we're all uh, looking after each other so that there's no uh, rest of it employment for everyone. Uh, we've had a little few people go, but we're pretty much the majority of our staff are still here, so only doing 20 hours a week, but it's spread right across the whole crew. And a smoky object filmed heading east over Queenstown's Remarkables was found not to be a meteor as first thought, and more likely a repatriation jet flight from Australia to South America. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. Teen skateboarders have been studied by the University of Otago, finding many of them prefer to skate than drive. And historic waka at Otako Marae has been moved to its final resting place, where other taonga are set to join it. And cattle have returned to the Tokomariro Agricultural Show after a two-year absence due to Mycoplasma bovis. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Craig. Good evening. Good evening. Um, public toilets are very much on the Dunedin City Council's radar at the moment. Um, uh, there's a $3 million proposal, would you believe, to, to build up to 19 new toilets around the city. Um, that's part of their 10-year plan, which they're uh, discussing at the moment. Uh, it's on the back of for population forecasting. Their, their figures are telling them they'll, uh, the city could increase by 10,000 people over within that period. So I guess they're saying more bums on seats. Right. Be cheesy right. about it. <laughs> um, so there's already 65 public toilets in the city, and um, and to maintain the current ratio of person per toilet, they're going to need another 19 apparently. Um, yet to determine the sites. Um, but yeah. Pretty strange somebody's doing those figures, really, isn't it? <laughs> um, we've got a lovely story about a Dunedin woman, Josh in uh, Joss Ingram. Um, she obtained her fourth Dan black belt in Wellington on Saturday, and uh, in doing so became the first legally blind Taekwondo master in the city. Oh, sorry, in the country. So, amazing effort there. Um, talking to her, she said the physicality of the test was more of a problem for her rather than her eyesight. So. Um, 19 years ago, her vision started going just when she was at, and working in an office, um, and it started rapidly deteriorating. To the point now, she said her eyesight is like looking through glad wrap, really scrunched up glad wrap. So not great vision there. And she took up Taekwondo in 2008 after she took her children along to lessons. So really lovely story that and a bit mm. inspiring for everyone really. Amazing. Um, fresh pages tomorrow, but it's something for everyone. We talked to Instagram fashion influencer uh, Katie Day, discuss, discusses our fashion body positivity and summer styles. Uh, we sought out some Christmas wines for Christmas Day, very important. And on the recipe front, um, Alison Lambert shares her smashed potato and sage recipe, which is also perfect for December 25, funnily okay. enough. Yeah. And just finally on sports, um, we're going to have a wrap today from the one-day match between Otago and Northern Districts down at the University Oval. Um, beautiful day down there, but 
The cricket for Matago hasn't been quite so perfect, so they're struggling a bit at the moment, but we'll have a full rundown on that. And um, Dunedin's been allocated three games in next year's Women's World Cup, Cricket World Cup. We're going to see England, New Zealand and South Africa all playing matches, so pretty exciting for that. Starts in March, so um, get your tickets. Great. Well, thank you, Craig. Thank you. All of that and more in tomorrow's ODT. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Looking at the southern view, watching from a rail over bridge as sea fog rolls in. Beginning with the situation, a front will edge onto southern districts tomorrow with mild northwesterlies at first, then colder southwesterlies following. The front will bring a period of rain to most of the region. To the southern towns, moderate northwesterlies and rain with 19 degrees in the Catlins, 18 in Balclutha and 17 in Lumsden and Gore. To the central lakes, moderate westerlies, cloud and 21 degrees for Wanaka and Queenstown, moderate westerlies, high cloud and 24 in Alexandra, and fresh north westerlies, rain and 17 degrees in Tiano. To the northern towns, on the coast, north westerlies and high cloud with 25 degrees in Timaru and 24 in Oamaru. Inland, moderate northwesterlies and cloud increasing with 23 degrees in both Twizel and Omarama. In Dunedin, fine tonight with light northeasterlies and an overnight low of 11. Fine tomorrow with high cloud increasing and thickening. Warmer with moderate northwesterlies developing. Some rain tomorrow evening with cooler southwest winds, a high of 23 and a low of 10. Showers at first on Thursday clearing, but remaining cloudy with cold, moderate southwest winds dying out, a high of 14 and a low of 9. And in Invercargill, cloud increasing tonight with an overnight low of 9. Cloudy tomorrow with rain developing around the middle of the day and fresh northwesterlies easing to showers later in the evening with cooler, lighter southwesterlies. A high of 17 and a low of 12. Showers clearing but staying cloudy and cool on Thursday with southerly winds dying out. A high of 13 and a low of 9. That's all for our news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.